All right, boys and girls, welcome back. It is week three of the college football season uh, and week three of the Carla and Crappy Show, guest starring Baby Fox um, and Charlie. Charlie's making an appearance uh, already if you're if you're actually watching the video stream on this. Um, I, I, this is one thing that I did not miss from in, during 2020 was my annual early football season fall cold. Um, <laughs> right. I have discovered that this week. Um, wow. I, it's, it's been a year and a half since I've had a cold and I hate it, but let, let's just, let's just say that let's get that out of the way. Um, my voice is better than it was. I was going to, I was thinking about doing very white impressions, uh, but I did, we're just going to sound like sick crappy. So that's, that's what we got. <laughs> um, Carla, on the other hand, uh, looks and sounds great for, oh, here. <laughs> for, um, for, I just got, uh, you guys don't get to see this, but I got to look at the bump and it's no longer a bump. Baby Fox is like, hello, <laughs> let's, let's do this. Right. <laughs> yep. We're, we're within the week, um, nice. of, of having this bump actually be a baby. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, we're excited, but Ooh, last week has been, has been rough. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're hanging in. <laughs> okay. And when you say last week is, has been rough, you were not talking about football, right? Because for I, me, it, it sucked. That's <laughs> right. Well, you saw a game in person. So I did. there's that. I did. I did. Um, and, 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 and as the day rolled on, the Buckeyes loss ended up mm-hmm. not being the, the headline of the day. No, and, that, and, that's, and that's okay. And it's the, the game, I mean, in the moment, it's, it's awful and you, and you think terrible things. It's, it was a great game. Um, I, I never will. And well, I'll talk about this a, a little bit more uh, in a couple seconds. But, um, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, um, but OU lost. Um, I, the Army, Army won, and I'm totally going to claim that. I also, um, my high school, uh, Upper Arlington, the Upper Arlington Golden Bears, uh, beat Westerville Central, I think, 42 to nothing on Friday. So that's that's what I'm hanging my head on this week. Um, how was your football weekend? Um, it was it was entertaining. Um, mm-hmm. Again, when, when you have a a baby on the way and spend a lot of time just kind of with the TV on getting things ready around the house. Cause I'm not really leaving the house much these days. Right. Um, so I saw a lot of pieces of games, um, which was, <laughs> okay. which was entertaining. Um, yeah. Just, you know, kind of, kind of flipping around, but I, I do want to go on the record and say that yes. um, we had a cat on our show before cats in college football became a, a viral meme this week. Uh, for, for years. We've been yes. seeing that for years. Um <clears throat> And if you keep watching, uh, Charlie's still hanging around down here, so he'll probably be back. Uh, yeah. So, so we were ahead of the, we were we were well ahead of our time. Way ahead um, of the curve. You know, but 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 that was one of the wackiest things, and and the fact that like the the cat at the Hard Rock like made the ticker on mm-hmm. ESPN just cracked me up. I was like, dude, we've been doing this for years. Yeah. Where have you been? Big deal. What's the big deal? Yeah. It's um, been done. College football wise, um, gosh, there's so many things that I could talk about this week. Um, first of all, I am, uh, I'm very, very excited to be bringing a baby into the world where the Stanford postulate exists. <laughs> <laughs> still, <laughs> because, still exists because holy cow, does the Stanford postulate exist in 2021? Uh-huh. Um, that was, it was a heck of a win. Now, obviously, you know, with, with, with carrying a baby. Um, yeah, I didn't make it all the way to the end of that game, but the game was kind of in hand by the time I fell asleep. Um, and just remarkable. Um, you know, it was, I, I was laughing through that entire game of like, this is a game Stanford should be losing. Stanford should not be winning this game. And here we are. Um, so I enjoyed that thoroughly. Um, <laughs> it was interesting to be on Twitter during the Texas meltdown in Arkansas. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. That was, that was an unexpected, um, you know, here we go again, kind right. of thing. Right. Um, we expected Texas to maybe struggle with Louisiana, did gr- look great against Louisiana and then went on the road um, and lost to an Arkansas team that's just off the radar right now. Um, and, and the wacky thing about that game was at the end of the game, the Hogs fans were chanting SEC. Why? <laughs> um, okay. I, <laughs> it's the same. You're, they're gonna, I, okay. <laughs> right. Maybe this is this is some Southeastern Conference logic that I don't that I don't understand, but um, yeah, 
do you guys actually want them to be in the same time? Uh, wow, Carly, Carly just blew my mind. That's, I'd say, <laughs> I, mean, I think we're done. That was, done. Was, that was thanks, the thing that was, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for watching everybody. We'll talk to you again next week. Um, yeah. No, that's, 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 that's really funny and really weird. And, and I, I, I'm having a hard time just, just fathoming why that would even happen. And, and the most baffling thing, which AJ and I, you'd gone to bed and AJ and I were still on, started a separate text thread, um, was the, uh, Jacksonville state win. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> just the, the, some of the, the post-game photos of that with, um, the Florida state cheerleaders coming off the field while the Jacksonville state players are rushing to the logo. Um, just, just remarkable stuff. And this is why we love college football, it right? Is, it is, um, that is, that is the great stuff. Um, so, it, so yeah, it was a good day. Okay. Okay. I, my experience was uh, d- 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 different. Um, right. <laughs> I can't, and we and, and I can't, I can't complain. We had a great day. I got to see a game uh, in, in Columbus live for the first time since November of 2019. Um, but boy, you come away concerned with with the the Ohio State's performance after that. Um, you know, and there are a couple games. Although <clears throat> I don't think I would I would classify Tulsa as a uh, as a walkover, and that's that's no. that's that's who Ohio State has on Saturday. Um, and then there's Akron the following weekend before we get into the to the to the Big Ten grind. Um, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you you can you can point at pass defense. Which I, I think was not bad, actually. Um, those problems were largely driven, driven by injuries, um, and the, the 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 two freshmen they had playing the corner actually played pretty well. Um, there were there were a couple different times where where they had good stops, uh, uh, good pass defenses. I I, I I I feel good about where that where that stands right now, and and um, you know the, the guys come back from injuries and that'll help some the run defense wow that's not good um and again some of it's inexperience the whole the whole back end of the defense is is, uh is really really green um i I don't think it's the case and this was this was the uh the uh, immediate overreaction in columbus is like we just don't have the guys who can hang with them no you do you just just simmer down it's okay um it's not personnel um I, I did his experience. Certainly. Uh, is it schematic? That could be. And, and, and Ryan day did not rule out making uh, a change about who's going to be calling defensive plays um, in, in the, for the rest of the season. Um, uh, that, that, that was the thing that came up in his, his press conference today on, on uh, Tuesday. Um, so that's, that's something that, that, that could change. Um, I, but the most bothersome thing for me was uh, every time Ohio State's played Oregon, since, or as long as we've been doing this show, I have said Oregon will not beat Ohio State because they are not as physical as Ohio State is. And I have never been wrong until Saturday. Um, Oregon beat up Ohio State. And that's, that's just sort of an across the board concern, both sides of the ball. Um, and that that's that's eh. uh, it is irritating. It is annoying and and worrisome, um, given that, uh, uh, you know, again, tiny, tiny sample size. Michigan looks better. Penn State is definitely better. Um, you know, there, there's a there's a whole conference season that that uh, Ohio State has to get through. And um, that Ohio State that I saw on Saturday um, it's it, it not as awful as everyone, every you know, the, the, the overreaction Monday uh, crowd is, is uh, says, but um, that that Ohio State would will have will struggle uh, if if things don't get fixed up, moved around, all of that good stuff. Um, and I should also point out that OU lost to a one double A school, yeah. <sighs> And, and and normally I would be like, <laughs> hey, that's cool because it's a, it's an FCS school, but it's Duquesne. It's Duquesne, and they were they were like they were Division two just a few years ago. I mean, it's not not that long ago that they made that transition. I don't think. Um, yeah, they joined the they, they joined the Northeast Conference in football. You want to say maybe five years ago, something okay. like that. Yeah. Uh, so I've had better football weekends, but not a big deal because there is always another football weekend. Uh, coming up right uh, right around the corner. Um, and so we are going to, uh, as we do, look ahead to next weekend, starting 
uh, with our group of five report from uh, AJ, who is um, uh, he, he was he was totally digging everything last weekend. It was, it was really hard to actually kind of hard to keep up with the with the text thread, uh, the stuff that he was that he was coming across. AJ, what do you got for this week? Hey, everybody, it's your old friend, AJ, uh, back with your week three, week three and a half, whatever, what, however you would like to add week zero, do that in your heart. Uh, week three, group of five after dark report. Um, I'm going to skip Thursday's game between Ohio and Louisiana. Um, Ohio, don't lose to Duquesne. Just throwing that out there. Uh, Louisiana looks fine. Um, they look good against Texas. Texas looked very bad against Arkansas, so... Congratulations, Arkansas, on your transitive win over Louisiana. Uh, Friday, we've got UCF at Louisville at 7.30. Uh, UCF looking solid so far. Congratulations to newly uh, relaxed Gus Malzahn. Uh, Louisville, it's not great. I mean, they look, they're, they're one and one. They're fine, but I think UCF takes that pretty easily. Uh, we're going to move on to Saturday. The noon slate has some games. Um, if you have things to do in the noon slate, don't feel bad about it. Uh, the only game that I will be keeping an eye on is Virginia Tech, uh, West Virginia, it, because it's the battle for the Black Diamond. It is Appalachian Country. This is a rock fight. Let it happen. Uh, Coastal Carolina at Buffalo at noon. Uh, Coastal Carolina is looking real strong. Uh, and Buffalo does not necessarily have uh, the folks that they had last year. Um, their coach Lance Leipold is now at Kansas so Coastal has beaten Buffalo's coach from last year and will go on and beat Kansas's coach's previous team anyways Coastal Carolina should cruise in this game um, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna direct your attention to uh, noon Northern Illinois at Michigan Michigan this might not go well for you Northern Illinois is not bad and Rocky Lombardi's there Ooh, the ghost of Rocky Lombardi. He's going to get you. Uh, we're going to scroll down to 2 p.m. We've got Nevada at K-State. Uh, K-State, either Stanford laid an absolute wet fart in week one and the real Stanford came out against USC, or Kansas State is real, real good, and they beat, a, they beat the brakes off of a very good Stanford team. Who is to say, again, small sample size? Uh, Nevada, though, in their small sample sizes, look fantastic. Their offense is flying. Carson Strong is going to be an NFL quarterback. Mark my words. Uh, but Nevada at K-State should be super fun, although that is on ESPN+. Plus. Hope you have that in your bundles. Um, nothing going on at 3.30 that anyone should really care. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot about Wake Florida State at Wake Forest. Yes, I also will point out the games that are probably garbage. Um, can Florida State beat a team that uh, is better than them? Who's to say? Uh, we also have, uh, where is it? Uh, 3.30. I, we, I have to bring my Pac-12 teams in here. At 3.30, we have USC at Washington State. USC canning Clay Helton. Dante Williams is their interim coach. That co that coaching search is going to be an absolutely very – it's going to be so messy. It's going to be so stupid. We are in Tennessee group text hell levels with USC. Uh, but they're a private institution, so you can't FOIA them, so it's less fun. Uh, but they're going to go to Washington State and play uh, in Pullman at 3.30. Uh, it is supposed to be 57 and raining – and uh, Washington, and, and this game should be played on a Friday night. I don't know why they're playing it at a semi-reasonable hour uh, in Pullman, but we'll do what, we'll do what we can. Four o'clock, Mississippi State at Memphis. That's going to get pointsy as hell. Um, Mississippi State looking strong already, two and zero air raid air raiding. Uh, but Memphis has yet another tall white quarterback, <laughs> and the pain will never end. Uh, so that should be super fun. You should watch that game. Game you should not watch is Northwestern at Duke. Don't watch that game. I will watch that game because I have a problem, but you should not watch that game. Uh, we're going to scroll down just a smidge here because we have a game that is being played at, a, at the wrong, another game being played at the wrong time. 
Uh, that is uh, 7 p.m. South Carolina at Georgia. That is supposed to be played at the hottest point of the day, generally a noon game, and no one should like it. Uh, this is going to be played under the lights where people might like it. That's stupid. We don't like that here. Um, where is it? I, here's the thing. I have a list of games that I want to go through, but then I have to go find them on the schedule because I just wrote the games out. I didn't write the times out. So, crap, you keep this in. Uh, 7 p.m. Utah at San Diego State. Oh, oh boy. This is going to be an actually fun game. It will be on CBS Sports Network, the network of champions. We've established this before. Um, San Diego State is good. Like, good, good. And they beat the absolute mess out of Arizona last week. Um... Utah coming off a loss to BYU. Uh, the Utah or BYU broke the streak. Good for Kalani Sataki and those Cougars. But this is a rock fight. This is a straight up Big Ten style rock fight. And uh, you should absolutely watch this game. Uh, we're going to keep it going. Hey, have you guys ever seen a fireworks factory on fire? If you'd like to watch something like that, turn on ESPN2 at 8 p.m. on Saturday to watch Tulane at Old Miss. Both of these teams can put up an absolute mess of points. Um, and the over-under on this game is currently 76. Hammer the over, please. Uh, if you'd like to watch the opposite of that game at 8 p.m. on ESPNU, you have Stanford versus Vanderbilt. We have a nerd fight on our hands. Which team shows up? Vandy getting their first non-conference win, uh, getting their first away win getting their first many many wins good job clark lee congratulations to vandy you done did it you won a football game um which which stanford shows up is it wet fart against k-state stanford or is it we're gonna beat the mess and get usc's coach fired stanford which one is it gonna be who's to say also not a body clock game because this is being played at 8 p.m uh, we are going to scroll down just a smidge. 9 p.m. Eastern on FS1. We've got Oklahoma State going to Boise State. Boise is fine. Um, they're a perfectly fine team right now. They're not going to kill anybody. Oklahoma State doing Gundy stuff. This should be super fun at 9 p.m. But, again, my favorite part is happening. Buckle up, kids. It's late slate time. 10 15 p.m. on ESPN, Arizona State at BYU. There is not a deeper cultural divide in the world than Arizona State fans going to Provo. I just want you to think about that. Think about everything that you possibly know about Arizona State, and then I want you to think about a place that thinks that sugary drinks are bad. Just put those two things together. It's going to be hilarious. I don't even know where Arizona State fans are going to buy alcohol. They're going to have to bring it with them, I think. Um, but no, this should be an actually good game. BYU looking very, very good. Arizona State has looked strong so far in their first two games, uh, looking like they're going to cruise uh, <clears throat> low-key Arizona State UCLA for the Big 12 South. Hmm. Keep an eye on that one. Uh, Arizona State looking very good. BYU looking very good. That should be a super fun game in Provo. At 10.45 p.m. on the Pac-12 network, so you won't see it. Others will. You probably won't. Fresno State at UCLA. This might determine who's the best team in California. Maybe. Um, Fresno State looking strong. Their one loss is by, I think, a touchdown, maybe a little bit more than that, to Oregon, a team who just beat Ohio State and then left a rubber duck in the middle of the O. That happened, everybody. Uh, Fresno State uh, did a better job containing Oregon. And they're going to go play UCLA. UCLA has looked super good. Zach Charbonnet, former Michigan running back, now in uh, sissy blue in UCLA, uh, looking very, very strong. And finally, at 12.30 a.m. Eastern on FS1, this will be a nationally televised game that kicks at 12.30. I don't know how I'm going to sleep. Uh, San Jose State at Hawaii. Hawaii, it, It's not. this is not a good Hawaii year, if I'm honest. But... Uh, San Jose State and Hawaii should be a pretty good game. Chevin Cordero, very fun to watch. They throw the ball a ton. It's another week of college football with a full slate. We love to see it. Carla Crappy, back to you. We'll see you for a full slate. 
Thank you, AJ. Um, uh, we're 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 gonna we're we're gonna talk about one of your games. Um, uh, when we get to our games here at the end of the show. But uh, before we do that, I was so hoping to be able to do this last year, and we couldn't do it last year. And then they didn't even play in the spring because the Ivy League didn't play in this play in the spring. New thing, because the season starts. Their season starts on Saturday. The Carla and Crappy Show Cornell Football Big Red Preview solely because my nephew plays football there so that's what that's what we're doing his first game um i really does not does not do red shirts so he is he's a sophomore uh he lost his freshman season to, to covid uh I, I don't know for sure that he's going to see the field um i guess his uh size and speed would would mean he's a special teamer for sure and he did get mentioned um in the school's press materials about being in the mix for, for some time uh, at, at running back also. So nice. Um, I am. Yeah. I, I was encouraged by that. Um, so each week we are going to uh, briefly, briefly take a look at um, Cornell, who they have coming, uh, what the outlook is. And um, so we don't seem to have any access to like lines or over unders or anything i'll keep looking for that but in the meantime <laughs> carla what, what do you think about ivy league football what do i think about ivy league football well i know that cornell's opponent this weekend is vmi yes um so so there's that and and cornell opens at home mm-hmm. if i read that correctly um uh, vmi has started this season yes it's one and one last weekend they got crushed by kent state um <laughs> sacrificial lamb for um an fbs school yeah. um yeah. so got blown out by the uh by the golden flashes so um sure i think cornell can beat him right if kent <laughs> can beat him cornell can beat him i okay so i to to be realistic for a second and, and i'm uh cornell uh, during the media day um for the ivy league uh, back in in i think it was late july early august uh they were picked to finish last in the league um and that's you know the beat folks who are covering the teams and and uh, have a uh, uh, should have, generally have a decent handle on what's on what's going on with the team, um, but uh, just in, in you know reading up on what um, uh, what I can find from uh, Cornell's site and, and their their uh, their media stuff, um, they return a ton of super seniors from from uh, 2019. That's that's been an exception to the Ivy League's. Um, uh, redshirt role uh, because of COVID. If you were if you were a senior uh, last year, you were allowed to come back and play this year. Um, so there's those. So they they have those guys who've been in the program for a long time. Uh, they have a returning starter quarterback, um, and this is the intriguing thing. And the, the people in the program point to this a lot. They finished the 2019 season uh, by winning three of their last five. Um, so uh, and and uh, I, I th- one of those games, at least one of those games, is on the road. I I, I that that's encouraging, and and I think that's something that um, the, the the people in the program are uh, seem to be kind of pointing towards as you know we got something figured out here. Um, we've had a year to to kind of get in, uh, to uh, familiar ourselves with the with the offense and defense and, and the workouts and everything that we're doing and and this is uh, things are going to change this season. Um, we that will remain to be seen. But this week against VMI, I think the um, big uh, this is um, just as, as an aside, Carlo. This is um, kind of like Auburn or something that they have. They seem to have two mascots or two things they called themselves big red and the bears i don't know so i'm going to just going to call the big red bears and the big red bears i think are going to open their campaign with a win on saturday um and if you have espn plus which i do you can watch that game at 2 p.m um because why would you want to watch the next one that we're going to talk about because it's just going to be well okay i'm getting ahead of myself i'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> go big red bears Go Big Red Bears. Uh, now to um, our feature games of the week. Uh, we'll start at 3.30 on Saturday. So you guys get to sleep in if you want. Um, number one, Alabama at number 11, Florida. Bama is favored by 15 and a half points. Um, I will be watching the Big Red Bears on, on Saturday. So I may miss, I may not see this game until the uh, end, which 
who knows what that's going to mean. Carla, what do you think about this one? I was just going to say, probably the best part of this game is going to be in the first quarter. And then uh, know, like, it, it. it's, it's going to be one of the, it's it, it, exactly what we talked about with Miami. I, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot different here that, that I'll say, but I'll, I'll at least go through it. The atmosphere is going to be going to be more entertaining, I believe, than what we had in week one with the, with the Alabama Miami game, because that was a neutral site. Yeah. Games yeah. in the swamp are fun. Um, mm -hmm. they're fun to watch on TV. The, the crowd really gets into it. And, and that's something that Florida has going for them in this game is the fact they are playing at home. Florida's offense has been really prolific, mm -hmm. um, more than 600 yards per game against Florida Atlantic and UCF. So, eh. but you, I mean, UCF that's, you know, soon to be big 12 member UCF. Mm -hmm. So, so there's that, um, but gone are the days of the Kyles. <laughs> in offense um Kyle Pitts and Kyle Trask are now both in the NFL right. um so so they're gone so so we have a new look Gator offense um that relies on two dual threat quarterbacks uh -oh. which is a completely different look first mm -hmm. you know the two of the things that we don't that we don't like about about college football and offenses is if if your leading rusher is the quarterback yeah, yeah. and you're and you're playing two quarterbacks um those are, both bad things. those are usually both bad things and florida is doing both of them this year um they have two, two their two quarterbacks are emory jones and anthony richardson jones actually leads the team in passing richardson leads the team in rushing um and richardson over the past two weeks has actually been the more explosive quarterback mm -hmm. um even though jones is technically the quote starter um Jones has, has made a lot of mistakes. He threw a couple of picks last week. Yep. Um, Richardson came in and, you know, had, you know, primarily ran the ball, um, but, but ran the offense pretty well while he was running. And so, you know, there's a lot of, is there a quarterback controversy in the swamp? That's kind of where we are with Florida right now um, is an offense that's still trying to kind of sort itself out. Will this work? I don't know. Um, here's the problem with having two dual threat quarterbacks. You're facing an Alabama offense that's only allowed 77 yards per game on the ground so far. <laughs> and, and that suddenly makes your offense one-dimensional. So Emory Jones is going to have to throw the football. Yep. And so far we've seen that he's not always accurate when he throws the football. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the Florida offense is going to have some, some challenges here. And the Florida defense is facing a Bill O'Brien offense, which we've already seen. Um, it just is rolling on all cylinders, even with all the new people, you know, mm -hmm. all the new personnel, um, Florida defense has been good against the run, but they're allowing more than 200 yards around 225 per game in the air mm -hmm. against an Alabama quarterback and Bryce young, who already has more than 500 yards and seven touchdowns in two games. Mm -hmm. Second <sighs> verse, same as the first <laughs> against another Florida school. Yeah. I, it, yeah. I, I literally, I see this being almost a carbon copy of that game. Miami was in the game early mm -hmm. against Alabama, kept it close through the first quarter and Alabama just steamrolled them the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Lather, rinse, repeat. Um, that's, that's really what I see here. I, I, I think because we were playing at home and because they'll have the, the, the backing of the, of the fans. And um, I, I think Florida will keep it interesting in the, you know, in the, in the, in the early moments of the game, um, kind of just riding that adrenaline and momentum. Right. But, but no, this is a, this is unfortunately another roll tide all the way. Roll tide roll. Um, I noticed two things uh, concerning this game when I, I was watching stuff last weekend, uh, wrap ups and, and all of that stuff. Um, first, as Carla mentioned, uh, Florida has been playing two quarterbacks. Carla, what do we say when you have two quarterbacks? You have no quarterback. You have no quarterbacks. And, and that's, that's a bit extreme in this case. These are, these are both talented yeah. guys, but they don't have a lot of experience and man, you don't, you, there's just no chance to, 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 to get any kind of continuity with your offense. If you're bringing, if you're shuttling quarterbacks in and out, um, I don't know what kind of shape Richardson's in. He, uh, he tweaked the hamstring uh, after his long touchdown run last week. Um, so I, you know, I, 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 Emory Jones is ostensibly the starter, um, and that may be, there may be more pressure on him if Anthony Richardson can't come in and, and, uh, do what he does with his feet. Um, number two thing that I noticed, boy, Nick Saban was not happy at the end of his game last week against, uh, Mercer, I think. Yeah. Um, he, he, he was not, uh, not pleased with execution, not pleased with effort. Um, a grumpy mix, a Nick Saban probably translates to a grumpy Alabama on saturday and that's just that's 
that is bad news for the home team. <laughs> um, those put those two things together um, and, you know, a variety of other variables and you come up with uh, an Alabama win. And I think a pretty healthy one by the time the game is done. Uh, we are going to go out of slightly out of chronological order and uh, jump on a game uh, that uh, will have AJ wound up. Um, 10 15 on Saturday, number 19, Arizona state is at number 23, Brigham Young University. The Sun Devils are favored on the road by three and a half points. Carla, what do you think? Um, okay, let's be honest, right? Like yes. we, get, we get to this point in, in the season, we're in week three and we're starting to talk about some West Coast teams and, mm-hmm. and the honest truth is, okay, we don't, we don't really know a whole heck of a lot about either of these teams. I'm not staying up that late, I'm sorry. I'm not. I haven't stayed up late to, you know, <laughs> we, we thought about turning the Holy War on last week um, and, and then we're, we're caught up watching Stanford USC and never flipped over sure. to it. Sure. Um, so, so yeah, I, I don't know a lot about BYU other than the fact that welcome to the big 12. Um, right. <laughs> so, um, despite BYU being nationally ranked they're you know, number 22 in the country now, mm-hmm. um, after that win over Utah, which was, a, which is a nice win. Um, the BYU defense is still giving up a whole bunch of yards, um, close to 400 yards per game on defense. Um, and, and, and the bad news there, that another thing that of things that we don't like when we look at football teams, statistically, you know, two quarterbacks leading rusher is on your team as a quarterback. Here's another one. When your defense gives up more yards than your offense produces. That's bad. And, and that's where BYU is right now. They're mm-hmm. close. They're close, but they're still giving up more yards than they're actually producing an offense. Um, and so that's kind of concerning. Now, Arizona State has, has been pretty prolific on offense. They're, they're putting up nearly 40 points per game, but against Southern Utah and UNLV, so what's your measuring stick there, right? Um, defense has played well, um, not really, you know, allowing less than 100 yards rushing per game, but again, against inferior competition for the most part. Quarterback Jaden Daniels is both the team's leading passer and rusher. Yes, we've got, we've got another one. So this is the first big test for Arizona State. BYU just came off of a, of a nationally televised test and passed it. And the Cougars are playing at home. I'm going to say, since we know nothing about either of these teams, I've not seen either of them play. I'm going to say advantage Cougars in this game, just because they have a little bit more experience. And um, this season, uh, you know, playing some, some more equal competition um, in Utah and they're playing at home and yeah, Cougars. Sure. Why not? You're muted. <laughs> I'm going to leave a little break here so I can find this where I screwed it up. <sighs> it's it's tough to replace a guy like Zach Wilson, uh, who is um, you know trying to be the latest savior of the New York Jets. Um, uh, but but Jaron Hall has been doing his level best and, and has put up decent numbers against pretty solid competition. Uh, it's, it's like 350 yards passing five TDs, no picks in his first two games. Um, that's, that's not like Brigham Young level quarterback production. Sure. Um, and the offense is scoring just 25 points a game, but it's been good for those two wins. And those were wins against two uh, PAC 12 opponents. Um, you know, the, the Holy Ward against Utah, who was uh, Utah was ranked at the point at that point. Um, and, and against Arizona down in Tempe, um, you know, the Sun Devils are uh, Herm Edwards. Sun Devils are are playing to win their games, uh, and they are two and zero again. You mentioned this sort of blah, 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 competition. Um, I have similar questions that you do. Uh, Jaden Daniels is the team's leading rusher, as you mentioned. That's a problem, um, and it's just it, looking at at Brigham Young's two quality wins um, versus Arizona State's kind of eh, wins. Um, Plus the fact that, that this game is on the road, uh, I, I think BYU has is, is had a, a tougher season so far, and they have shown that they are up uh, for, for that kind of stuff. Um, and I think they will beat uh, the Sun Devils at home. Our third and final game, which is not the third and final game of Saturday, but uh, this is the one that we, you know we have to save for last. Come on, you know <laughs> this. 7.30 Saturday. 
Happy Valley, number 222 Auburn visits number 10 Penn State. The Nittany Lions are favored by six. Carla, what do you think? Yeah, I have some thoughts. Um, I think right. I thought you might. <laughs> so when you look at Auburn coming into this game and you look at what they've done in their first two games, you look at the scores, the scores that they have put up and you go, holy cow, right? I mean, this is an Auburn offense that is currently averaging 61 points per game. That's absurd. That's nuts. Uh, yeah. Nuts. Um, and, but again, against inferior competition, right? They've, they've put up 61 points against Akron and they Alcorn beat State. Alabama. Oh, wait, that was Alabama State. Never mind. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, this is another one of those. We, we don't know who Auburn is yet because they, yes, I'm going there. Auburn ain't played nobody. I, that, that's, that's where we are, right? And yes. so their first true test of the season is to head north for the first time in, in program history <laughs> to play a game in Happy Valley <laughs> in a whiteout. Um, I, that's, it, that's a big test to ask for any team, yeah. to be honest. Um, you know, especially a team that's not used to, um, big 10 environments. Yes. I know SEC has big environments and the, and the blah, whole thing. Blah, blah, I, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. They're different. Yes. It's the same thing. If Penn state was going down to an SEC school to play or let's, Penn state was in the, in the role of Alabama this week and went mm-hmm. to the swamp, they mm-hmm. would have the same challenges. Mm-hmm. Atmospheres are electric. They're different mm-hmm. between the conferences. So um, I think that plays a factor here. Auburn has the number three rush offense in the country. Right. Can't deny that. They've got a heck of a back in, in, in Jarquez Hunter. Um, and statistically, Auburn's defense looks like it's really good. But again, we, we don't know because they haven't played anybody. Right. So it looks like this is going to be a very formidable um game statistically but there's gonna there's a lot of a learning curve here because we just don't know a lot about auburn you know we've we we, we joke about bo nix um mm-hmm. you know being the best sec named quarterback of all time um he struggled right we, yeah. we, we, you know when, when he came in as a freshman we talked about him and said this could be the next leading quarterback of the sec and it hasn't panned out yet no no and so you wonder how this is going to work this year yeah he's looked great so far mm-hmm let's see when we start playing some, some big boys and, yeah. and see how, how this all plays out. Um, here's my concerns about, about Penn state. Okay. Um, we saw a Penn state defense against Wisconsin that was incredibly opportunistic mm-hmm. when you're going up against an offense statistically that is rolling the way that Auburn is right now, that has to continue. Can't stop. Mm-hmm. Um, you cannot lapse on a team that has the ability to put up points quickly against weaker defenses. Um, you know, and the other thing is um, the weakness statistically for the Auburn defense is in the passing game and, and where we saw some real potential, where at least I saw some real potential for growth in mm-hmm. the Penn state offense after that Wisconsin game, because I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't watch any of the Penn state ball state game. I was keeping an eye on that score and, you know, sure. I was watching other games, but um, what I saw from the Penn state offense was the opportunity to have that big play ball again, that mm-hmm. we really haven't seen mm-hmm. out of that Penn state offense in a couple of years. Clifford, Sean Clifford needs to hit Jahan Dotson when he's open down the field. Yep. He had a number of plays where, where Dotson was standing out there by himself against Wisconsin and Clifford just over, overshot him. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If you get that ironed out, I really see, and this is probably me, this is probably my overreaction. If Clifford to Dotson can get ironed out, mm-hmm. it has the potential to be a combo similar to the days back in the McSorley to Hamilton kind of days. Right. 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 I mean, I, I saw glimpses of that with how wide open Dotson was. I was like, that's a ham, that's, that's Hamilton standing out there, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so there's some real potential here for this offense to really kind of take it up a notch. Offense needs to needs to execute. Well, defense needs to be opportunistic. The whiteout is going to help them a whole ton. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, I'm going to pick Penn state in this game. I'm stunned, <laughs> but I think, and, that's I wore a- my, and, and I wore my white shirt for the whiteout. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. I, 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 uh, I, we, we've talked about this a couple times already. Um, Penn state looks better. 
than they did. This this looks a lot like the Penn State team at the, the second half of last season when they ripped off four runs, four wins in a row. Um, these guys have figured that out. Uh, Clifford has settled down. Um, I don't have new wood to knock on. He hasn't thrown a pick yet this season. I don't think. Um, I, it, and and it, it doesn't feel like uh, the the burden of the offense is entirely on his shoulders the way it was last season. Um, yeah. And 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 I think it, and I, I've mentioned this before. I think that was a that was a problem for him. It's a problem for the offense overall. Uh, he, he cannot. It is not possible to get the ball in Dotson's hands too often. Whether you're just talking about the long balls, um, there's there are there are creative uh, there is creative play calling to be had here. Um, uh, uh, whether that's the screens end arounds, get the ball in his hands, and it will cause problems for a defense that that statistically is is awesome, but we we, we just don't know. We know that the level of competition hasn't isn't as good. Um, is, is anything that they're going to see on Saturday. You mentioned Bo Nix. We love Bo Nix. We're a fan of Bo Nix. Um, mm-hmm. Bo Nix has been inconsistent. Uh, Bo Nix is, is figuring out um, a new offense. Um, I, I've seen a couple mentions where he's spending more time under center. That's a, a different thing for him. Um, I, it, it, numbers are, 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 are fine. Uh, so far, but you know, again, it's, it's the, the the competition that he's faced. Um, the, the the folks who made up Auburn's schedule didn't do him any favors in in scheduling a couple of cupcakes before before this game. Yeah, um, he is playing one of the best defenses in the country, um, and I think it's a defense that's been tested to a greater degree than uh, than the defense that he's looking at practice every day. Um, statistically, Auburn's defense is is excellent, but again. We're talking about different levels of competition here so far in the season. And then there's the ultimate wild card, and that is the whiteout. And I'm, you know, SEC fans think it matters more and blah, 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 blah. You guys don't have anything like a whiteout, <laughs> period. There is nothing in the SEC like a whiteout. Uh, and and Bo Nix has not seen it uh, except on TV. Um, and that guys I, I can tell you guys that doesn't do it justice <laughs> um having been there a couple times it, it, it's just seeing it on television um gives you uh like half the picture of what a whiteout is um and that's uh that 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 all adds up to a penn state win here um it, it's I, I i love that we have this matchup um and it's it's uh, gonna be fun uh contributing to uh some uh, some uh, t- trash talking at some point during the season because I think the Big Ten is going to win this one. Uh, boys and girls, you can hear the Carlin Crappy Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, lots of other podcasting hosts. You can watch us on YouTube and on the show's Facebook page. If you like us, please subscribe, rate, and review. If you don't, uh, mind your own damn business, and be sure to come back week to see exactly how wrong we were, Carla. Do you have any final thoughts? So I wrote down three really quick games for three different reasons. Um, First game on my radar, I didn't write a time down because it's not about actually watching it. It's about the, oh boy, things could fall off the ledge pretty quickly here. Um, (laughs) Florida State is at an undefeated Wake Forest on Saturday. Um, Yeah, that's, it's sneaky good. Um, The the, the Demon Deacons are 2-0 playing at home Mm -hmm. um, against the Florida State team that is just absolutely reeling right now. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I can't say it's necessarily going to be an entertaining football game, but probably something you want to keep an eye on scoreboard wise. Okay. Um, If you want an entertaining football game um, and you're not watching the whiteout and you should be watching the whiteout. um, whiteout? Tulane at Ole Miss Mm -hmm. at eight o'clock on ESPN2, Um, as AJ would say. That's going to get pointsy real fast. Uh-huh. Um, teams are averaging more, nearly 50 points per game, and, and their defenses are giving up more than 300 yards. And hey, Tulane took Oklahoma to the wall. To the wire. On, yeah. on, 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 in, in Norman. Huh. Huh. Okay. Yep. So that, that game should be, should be tons of fun to watch. Um, and then because, you know, I started the show of the Stanford postulate, I'm ending the show of the Stanford postulate because I saw this game on the match on the schedule and I just right. started laughing Stanford at Vanderbilt. Oh God. <laughs> Eight o'clock on this, ESPN. This is like the ultimate test of, of the Stanford postulate. It is. Um, 
I, I, I has Vandy scored yet this season? Do you know? Vandy Kathy? won last week. Oh, did, okay. I didn't. I did not know that actually. <laughs> yes, Vandy. Vandy won a game that it shouldn't have. Um, okay. Against Colorado State. Um, wow. So so Vandy is one and one. Um, but yeah, they really haven't looked good at all. And um, you know, lo- losing your your season opener to ETSU is not the way you want to start no. the Clark Lee era here in Nashville. So um, yes, this is the ultimate test of the Stanford postulate. Um, although. Although. Stanford, Stanford postulate says that, that, that Stanford would lose this game, but right. that's no, um, hmm. I, but what if I, did, I don't know. Well, this is, like I said, this is the ultimate test of the Stanford postulate that, I mean, it, it's gotta be, we will, we will find out. I just like that the, that our beloved tree is coming to Nashville. Oh, I just wish I, I just wish I could go. I just, uh, yeah, man, a picture with, with you and, and tree would be awesome, but it would, we'll have to, we'll save that for next time, I guess, <laughs> I guess. Um, I have, a, I have a, one final thought, which probably should be that my Bobcats are, are playing at Louisiana um, on Thursday night. Uh, if uh, the tropical storm Nicholas doesn't interrupt. Um, but I mean, the, the OU's cratered <laughs> this season. It's been not good, as we mentioned before. So I think my final thought is going to be um, next week. Next week, Carla will not be with us because Carla will be dealing with more important things. I will. Right? There, there are more important, believe it or not, there are more important things in college football. I, I have as, as difficult as, as a time I have as in believing that um, I am, I am uh, willing to acknowledge that um, <laughs> uh, baby Fox's arrival uh, is uh, eminent. Yes. And um, then Carla will be taking some time off. We will have some guests, some of whom, you know, some of whom you don't, but will. Um, filling in for Carla until she is ready to come back and, and uh, uh, until baby Fox, um, baby Fox gets to decide, uh, has a hand in this decision. It's like, yeah, mom, no, mom's not, no, mom's not doing that now. <laughs> mom's, mom's going to stay up and give me, give me breakfast in the middle of the evening. Um, <laughs> yep. But we're hopeful by the end of the, by sometime around the end of the regular season uh, that uh, Carla will be able to come back. Um, do you have, uh, do you have any thoughts about this, about this matchup? How's this going to go? Uh, me against the me and the baby. It's is not that really what we're you against the baby. It's yeah. It's it, how is it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, it'll be an adventure. <laughs> that's for sure. I, okay. I I've, I've been joking with my husband that I'm I'm definitely ready to not be pregnant anymore. <laughs> um, and I understand I'm, that is a thing. And I and I'm ready to to be able to hold this little one and nice. and that that's actually we are we are scheduled um to to have that happen um a week from today. So okay. I am a. I'm a week, I'm a week away from, from holding a baby. Um, and excited about that. Um, also it's kind of, it's ironic that I'm probably gonna end up watching more college football this year than I have in, in years. Yes. Um, <laughs> because I'm going to be home, um, yeah. taking care of a little one. So, so I'll have lots of thoughts. I'll, f- I'll find a way, um, okay. I'll find a way to, to weigh in somehow. I might not be in a, sure. an appearance on the show, but, um, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out and, and definitely baby will, uh, we'll make an appearance. The, uh, the Penn okay. state one Z will be here. Um, when we That's, get home from the hospital. Okay. So, okay. so we'll, it's, it's, it's white. I assume it's blue actually. Uh, okay. Easier okay. to clean. True. This is, and see, this is something I would not have thought of. So <laughs> don't, don't, li- when it comes to baby Fox, don't listen to anything that uncle crappy has to say. Okay. Boys and girls, let's. But let's, let's we will make sure that, that we will make sure that the 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 baby fox makes an appearance in some way, and you know we'll keep you we'll keep everybody updated. Sweet, um, but but we're excited. We <laughs> we being um me and and Mrs. Crappy and the tens of listeners to to our podcast all uh had the best wishes for you guys and for baby fox. We can't wait to see and meet um, this kid, your your college football companion, for the next yes. several months. Um, I I have a, my glass of, of cold medicine here that I've been sipping on during the show. Um, Carla is a few days away yes. from being able to have a glass of wine again. 
<laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show, but we've got a, we've got a bottle of champagne chilling in the fridge already. Um, that's uh, that's going to be like really weak mimosas because I'm going to have to ease myself back into this between yeah, that's feeding true. the that's true. feeding the baby and I haven't had anything you know any beverages in nine months. Like I have to be careful with it. So so yeah, when we get home from the hospital, we are making incredibly weak mimosas to kind of ease ourselves in. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Excellent. having one, dang it. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I think, yeah, as soon as you get home and then and then uh and then take it from there. Uh Carla, cheers to you and David and Baby Fox. Uh folks, cheers to you guys. Enjoy the games this weekend. Um, and come back next week and see what it is that we have in store. We'll talk to you. <laughs> and who's soon. sitting in my chair? <laughs> and who's sitting in wait, someone's gonna be sitting in your chair? Wait a minute. I don't know. We'll figure it. it, it, it I, it, we have no idea. <laughs> if there's if there's there's that theme again there it is guys enjoy the week we'll see you back here uh next week cheers